Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India applications and modelings of uh, membrane based separation processes. Uh, initially in, in this lecture what we will be covering will be defining the uh, separation processes and uh, then we will be looking into fundamentals and various uh, definitions of uh, um, uh, introduction of the uh, membrane separation system. So, we start with what a separation process is. Let us look into definition of a separation process. in a separation process uh, we should there should be a feed stream then there will be some agent will be will be giving input to the system between uh, uh, feed stream and the product stream and the external agent can be either energy or matter okay so uh, one example of energy is distillation, where uh, energy is given into in the form of heat energy supplied by a reboiler. So, reboiler supplied the energy and the feed stream is divided into the various product streams. For So, uh, in case of let us say coagulation, or adsorption it is the external agent is matter. We add an external agent to affect the separation. So, input of energy or matter is essential for affecting a separation process. Now, let us look into the extent of separation. how we define extent of separation between two species i and j. i and j are two species. Alpha i j is defined as x i 1 divided by x j 1 divided by x i 2 x j 2 where 1 and 2 are two process streams. Okay. So, this is also known as the separation efficiency. So, if so, I and I and G are two species, one and two are the two process streams. So, if alpha I j is equal to 1, then there is no separation occurs. If alpha I j is less than 1, then stream 1 is concentrated in j. and stream 2 is concentrated in I. If alpha i j is greater than 1, then stream 1 is concentrated in j and stream 2 is concentrated in 
uh, stream stream 1 is concentrated in i and stream 2 is concentrated in j. So, by looking into the value of alpha i j and the composition of the product stream and the uh, feed stream, one can identify which stream will be rich in which species and which stream will be uh, you know lean in the other species. Now, let us look into the driving force of any separation process. The driving force of any separation process is gradient of chemical potential. Now, all of you must know about the chemical potential, if you forget you just brush up your idea of basic thermodynamics. Chemical potential will be a function of if you uh, remember pressure, temperature, composition and electric potential of the system. Typically in an uncharged system, we will be having only these three in independent thermodynamic properties, which will be influencing chemical potential. Now, chemical potential is not a directly measurable properties, only pressure, temperature, composition etcetera are the directly measurable thermodynamic properties and there exist relations like Gibbs Duhem relationship by which this independent uh, properties will be related to chemical potential. So, therefore, if there is a change in pressure, temperature, composition of the system that will lead to a gradient of chemical potential and that will be finally, leading to separation of species. Okay. So, basically th there may be a combined effect of this any of this uh, uh, thermodynamic properties or if any one of them any two of them if any uh, all of them will be changing that will be affecting the gradient of chemical potential leading to separation of the species. Okay. So, once that is identified let us uh, go to the uh, you know definition of uh, um, uh, separation processes. There are basically two broad categories. of separation processes. One is equilibrium governed separation process another is red governed separation processes. In equilibrium governed separation processes, the equilibrium relationship equilibrium existing between feed and product stream will govern the extent of separation. So, therefore, there will be a maximum limit at a particular temperature. So, there will be a maximum limit of separation that is uh, that can be attained or exists in equilibrium governed separation processes, because the composition of the of a particular species will be following an equilibrium relationship in the feed and the product stream. So, one cannot go beyond that a maximum com composition. So, there is a limit existing between uh, in case of equilibrium relationship uh, equilibrium separa based separation processes and all, all the all the uh, sep basic separation processes that we have studied in third year and fourth year they are falling under this category equilibrium governed separation processes. So, what are the examples distillation absorption adsorption, drying, extraction. There are many others. So, basically these are the, these are some of the examples of equilibrium governed separation process. And in any process engineering, 
of uh, typically appearing in chemical engineering, the separation is an integral part. So, one has to go for the product separation, even if you, if you have a reactive system, there will be product of separate several species that will be coming out after the reaction and some of the products will be desirable, some of the products will be undesirable. One may have an aim to maximize a particular product out of various other products existing in the stream. So, therefore, one has to go for a separation process in the downstream and uh, based on the system performance or based on the you know uh, uh, your, your objective, one has to take recourse to the either equilibrium, equilibrium governed separation process or red governed separation process. Now, let us see what are the red governed separation processes. The rate governed separation processes are basically those processes where rate of transport of a species in the system governs the separation extent of separation. For example, most of the membrane based separation processes they fall under red governed separation processes, membrane based processes. Okay. For example, reverse osmosis, ultrafiltration, nanofiltration. microfiltration, all pressure driven separation processes, membrane based separation processes, they fall under the red governed separation processes. Now, uh, so that is the difference between a equilibrium governed separation process and red governed separation process. So, effects of operating conditions are quite crucial in red governed separation processes. For example, if you can maintain all, all the separation processes that I have given an example, they are basically the pressure driven separation processes. So, if we increase the major driving force, that is the pressure drop across the membrane, if you increase this driving force, then the rate of the species will be altered. So, one can go for a, a higher throughput or a higher extent of separation by controlling the operating conditions or in vis a vis by controlling the rate of transport of the species through the in, in this in the in the process or in the system. So, that is the difference between the equilibrium governed separation process and red governed separation process. Now, I think we should directly get into the membrane based separation processes. So, in membrane based processes uh, first we will be looking to what is the definition of a membrane? Membrane is defined by a phase that uh, gives a preferential transport, uh, leads a preferential transport of a species among many. So, if there are number of species present in the feed stream, then a particular species will be preferred to be transferred to the through the membrane. Therefore, the product stream will be enriched in that particular species and the uh, and, 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 and in terms of other species it will be of having lower concentration. So, that is the definition of membrane. Before going into the fundamental transport mechanisms of the membranes and categorization of the various processes, first look into what is the typical casting process of a membrane, casting of a typical polymeric membrane. Uh, 
I will be mostly concerned and concentrated on polymeric membrane, because these membranes can be of two types, either they can be polymeric, they can be inorganic, they can be organic like polymeric, they can be inorganic like uh, alumina, ceramic etcetera. Now, there are advantages and disadvantages of both types of membranes. For example, the poly polymeric membranes, the basic polymer, the base polymer by which the membrane is formed either polysulfon, polyacrylonitrile, polyurethane, PVC, polyvinyl chloride, they are blends cellulose acetate that is the starting material of uh, membrane, polymeric membrane, their combination blends so and so forth. Now, the major advantage of the polymeric membrane is that one can really control the pore size of the polymeric membrane to a fine extent. One can control the pore size up to the range of angstrom, which will be used for separation of monovalent salts. On the other hand, this polymeric, so that is the major advantage. That means, pore controlling can be achieved. Fine pore controlling can be achieved. On the other hand, these polymeric membranes, they cannot withstand high temperature. And what is the very high temperature? Typically beyond 80 to 90 degrees centigrade. So, therefore, if you have a process stream of high temperature, you cannot directly get into the poly in, into the membrane system, one has to go through a heat exchanger, bring the temperature down and then you know um, uh, direct it into the membrane based pro in the process having the polymeric membranes. On the other hand, in case of inorganic membrane, the, the problem is not that much. In case of inorganic membrane, one can really go to a uh, you know a process, uh, one can handle a process stream at very high temperature. At high temperature and what is the typical high temperature? So, any, any anything 250 degree centigrade, 500 degree centigrade, it should not be a problem. It has a thermal stability, high thermal stability, but the major problem of the inorganic membrane is that the pore size control at lower pore size like in less than micron is very difficult to obtain. So, pore size control to lower range, what is the lower range? In the range of angstrom and nanometer is not possible. So, therefore, for uh, the inorganic membranes cannot go below the micron sized pores for example, for the microfiltration. So, these are the difference between the organic and inorganic polymer uh, organic and inorganic membranes and then uh, we will be looking into the membrane casting various steps of membrane polymeric membrane casting. First, we take a we, we select polymer, polymer dissolve it in a in an organic solvent. In an organic solvent, and what is a typical organic solvent? Typical organic solvent is DMF, that is dimethyl fluoride, uh, DMSE. DMSO, dimethyl sulfoxide and then acetone. So, these are various typical organic solvents by which polymer is dissolved. Once we select the polymer, polymer composition and the uh, and the solvent, then uh, it will be dissolved in the solvent. What will be resulting? A resultant will be a viscous solution. And this solution 
will be continuously stirred or sonicated, so that there will be no agglomeration of the polymeric material into the solution. So, it will be it will be producing a homogeneous solution. So, once the homogeneous solution is done, uh, actually the homogenization of the solution is kept on should be continued, so that there will be no dissolved air bubble present into the solution. Otherwise, if you would like to cast it, then there will be defects that will be appearing in the polymer film and which is not desirable at all, because that will be uh, you know disrupting the continuity of the polymer film and uh, it will deteriorate the uh, 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 the performance of the of the membrane. So, once the viscous solution is done, then it is cast on a third step is the viscous film viscous solution is cast on a uh, polyester fabric non-oven polyester fabric by 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 a by a casting knife which is also known as the doctor's blade so once it is cast then it will create a very thin film thin film of polymer now what is a typical casting knife a typical casting knife is a mirror polished cylindrical cylinder cylindrical um, uh, uh, solid cylind cylindrical object having the square or rectangular cross section at the end and the typical cross section looks like this. So, when you place this cross section uh, on, on, on a surface and all these surfaces are calibrated properly that if you just turn it then it will be creating a gap let us say 50 micron between the surface and the, uh, and the, and the polymer film solution and if you just turn it once again, so the one can realize let us say 100 micron. So, since there are four surfaces of this uh, uh, square, uh, square or rectangular cross section at the end, one can realize you know at least four um, uh, thicknesses of the casting film st uh, let us say 50, 100, 150 and 200 micron in the same doctor's blade. So, therefore, using the doctor's blade, same doctor's blade one can realize four thicknesses of polymer. Uh, on the on the uh, polyester fabric then there will be given an evaporation time what is evaporation does this evaporation during this evaporation the solvents will be evaporated through the polymer film during their evaporation the fine pores are formed into the polymer matrix and typically this evaporation time may be from the uh, in the order of second to minute one or two minute once that is done then it will be immediately put into a gelation bath what is a typical gelation bath typical gelation bath is basically an aqueous solution let us say water water being an antisolvent it is it is a bath of antisolvent to the polymer once the antisolvent um, uh, comes in contact with the polymer film the immediately the phase inversion takes place so this is also known as the phase inversion technique and the polymer film gets solidified and transfer uh, uh, from the liquid stream and the membrane is formed polymer film is solidified membrane is formed. There will be exchange of solvent and non-solvent from the non-solvent from the polymer matrix and uh, uh, solvent from the polymer matrix and non-solvent from the aqueous stream. Because of the concentration gradient, they will be immediately exchanging. The non-solvent will be coming out from the polymer matrix into the gelation bath 
and the non solvent will be going into the polymer matrix from the gelation bath. So, therefore, uh, whenever the non solvent will be getting into the system into the polymer matrix immediately they will be forming bigger pores and the and, and the pores will be formed. So, this will be creating the pores into the membrane matrix and this solvent non solvent exchange is known as the demixing. This demixing can be two types it can be a quick demixing. So, uh, in case of quick demixing the uh, exchange of solvent non solvent will be very very quick and it will be leading to a, a very dense mat polymer matrix. On the other hand if the solvent and uh, in the demixing is delayed delayed demixing then there will be it will be forming a larger pores into the membrane matrix. So, by controlling the extent of, of mixing and demixing one can really control the pore size distribution. So, what is the what are the basically the various con controlling factors of uh, pores ok. Once the membrane is kept in the gelation bath and the form the uh, is formed then it is taken out then it is take it taken out from the from the solution and it is it is dried and once it is dried then it is stored either in distilled water or into a uh, you know uh, preservative solution. So, that there will be no microbial attack on the polymer film or the membrane film ok. So, once by, by controlling the some demixing uh, quick demixing or delayed demixing one can really control the pore size of the membrane. Hence, the various let us let us just tabulate various affecting factors controlling factors which can be essentially the control the membrane pore size. First factor is uh, composition of polymer if you take a 10 percent polymer solution then it will be you will be landing up with a particular membrane. If you take a 20 percent it will be landing up probably a denser polymer matrix. So, composition of polymer solution. So, basically the I am talking about the composition of the casting solution. Second is nature of the polymer of course, selection of polymer is very very important. If you select a polyacrylonitrile membrane will be getting more porous membrane for example, microfiltration membrane. If you select a polysulfon membrane then one will land up into an ultra filtration membrane like that. So, nature of the polymer is very important composition of the casting solution is very important. Third one is the selection of solvent. Now, depending on whether you will be selecting DMF, DMSO, DMSC or acetone the pore size distribution of the membrane will be altered fourth one will be the uh, nature of additive and their concentration nature and concentration of additive. One can use various pore forming agents they are also known as the porogens these, these pore forming agents are polyethylene glycol. polyvinyl pyrrolidin and there are various molecular roots of polyethylene glycols are available there are various molecular molecular roots of uh, polyvinyl pyrrolidin are available. So, one can you one can alter the concentration of these additives the molecular root of the additives and the oh, and these pore forming agents they forming pores into the membrane surface and can alter the pore size distribution. There the nature of the anti solvent is also important. That means, nature of the gelation bath whether you are using water whether you are using water PEG solution whether you are using water. Uh, 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 water DMF water solvent mixture. So, that will be very important. So, if you use pure water the transfer demixing will be will be will be will be uh, will be more. On the other hand if you use a solvent anti solvent mixture then the concentration gradient of uh, 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 the concentration gradient that will be driving anti solvent into the polymer matrix will be less. So, by that way one can control the pore size distribution also another important point is the uh, film thickness because if you have a film of shorter thickness 
then the resistance the hydraulic resistance offered by the membrane against the solvent flux will be less and one can expect a higher throughput of the process if we want if one goes for a larger th film thickness then the resistance against the solvent flux will be more and what the, the the resultant throughput will be less so film thickness is also an important factor then next one is the temperature of casting solution of casting solution as well as temperature of uh, gelation bath. As we have already discussed earlier that uh, temperature is one of the controlling factor to alter the uh, gradient of chemical potential. So, if you alter the temperature of the casting film or the gelation bath that will be again really control in a, uh, the that will be really controlling the t mixing process of solvent and non solvent resulting into a particular pore size of the membrane. So, that will complete the membrane casting process and the basic fundamentals of the um, behind the any separation process. So, we will taking the we will be taking the next class on different factors of different properties of the membrane which will be very very important and will categorize the various membrane separation processes. Thank you.